Welcome to, I guess, the latest episode of GPR, Galfe Pirate Radio. Um, tonight we're doing something special. We're filming at night. Woo. Um, we're actually, I'm actually sitting down with my friends Mara and Blake, um, and we're going to be talking about the first season of New Who. Um, I basically lent them the first season, and they pretty much powered through it. And I've yet to have a chance to sit down and talk to anybody that wasn't, that isn't as familiar with New Who as per se myself. Angela or a lot of the other people on the show, so we're, it's kind of awesome to get this like sort of fresh perspective on the first season or first season of New Who um, that we normally don't get on the show. So I'm really excited about this. I'm gonna have our two get our two guests introduce themselves and then talk about a little about a little bit about their past with what they knew of Doctor Who going into New Who, and then we're gonna jump into the overview of the season and of Eccleston. And we're also, I'm kind of interested to see what they take about Eccleston's uh, uh, sort of uh, surprising departure so early on in the, in this, in the show. Because um, whether they knew it or not, he was actually signed for pretty much four seasons, but was let go early. And I'll talk a little bit about that myself, um, just to inform them and get their response, because this is kind of exciting for me. So we'll start over here with the ladies, because ladies first. And would you please introduce yourself to us? Hi, Internet. It's I'm Maura. <laughs> um, I guess I should say... Yeah, I, yeah. Well, well, where, where, where do you come from okay. with Classic Who? Since I, mean, um, I know you just started with New Who with this. So what did you know about Doctor Who before delving into this? Well, um, in high school, I, I mean, I caught little bits here and there. Um, sometimes on, like, whatever random station might be playing yeah. something. Once in a while, uh, you know, we'd get the station back home. I'm from Massachusetts originally, so we had a lot of weird, like, local stations that played stuff late at night. Mm -hmm. um, and it really, actually, it go. I always wanted to watch Doctor Who on a regular, on a regular basis because I have a weird. It's. I, I have this thing for 1950s sci-fi robots. I think they're awesome and adorable. And so when I first saw a Dalek, I thought it was adorable. And. Um, and yeah, so it kind of stems from there, like always kind of trying to find it because I'm like, oh, what is this that I want to... Do you remember who, wh what doctor you saw first? You know, if it was like Baker with the It scarf? actually wasn't, I know it wasn't Baker. I want to say it was, um, well, I saw some of the, the original black and whites. Okay, so then... That were on that um, station, but I don't remember them as well. So then you're talking, if it was black and whites, you're talking Trouton, Hartnell, or Pertwee, which I actually did totally out of order. But those were your three that were filmed in black and white. I think Hartnett rings a bell. Hartnell was the very first. He was the with the white hair that kind of did a weird sort no, of body No, no, it wasn't him. That wasn't him. I think I've caught maybe an episode okay. or two, but that wasn't the one I the saw. The other one that had white though. hair would be Pertwee, which was the white curls, who, who dressed like a dandy, as Izzy even says. I think that's... Okay. Yes, okay, I remember the dandy thing. Yeah. Uh, but what I saw the most of was probably... I mean, I probably saw mostly Baker yeah. and everything, but that was... I saw more like in college. Mm -hmm. I had a, a friend who was obsessed with Doctor Who, um, and it was, uh, and actually I remember when I was in college feeling so out of the loop because I saw so little Doctor Who, what I saw was very old and and sparse. So yeah. uh, he had a bunch, I remember, and this was, you know, before everybody in the world had DVDs, yeah. he had a whole bunch of them on VHS and we would go over and watch a couple of episodes here and there. So I, I got what yeah. I could. Um, and so it's not very linear, my experience, but... Well, <laughs> as Dr. Who would say, wibbly wobbly time, you whine. Yes. So, I mean, it, it works out well that you watch it, you know, the way you watch yeah. it. Yeah. So anyway, with the whole <laughs> upsurgence of, you know, fandom and stuff with um, 
Doctor Who, and there's just so many references out there that I'm like, okay, I know a little bit about this. I I need to I need to just jump in, get the feet wet, and, and yeah. see what's going on. And uh, I'm uh, I'm liking the new Who. Yeah, that's good. I am. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That means we don't have to kill you. <laughs> Not that I would actually kill you. I mean, that'd be bad, bad yeah. form. Especially since, you know, I need to receive one of the weddings. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, you've got a camera rolling. That's, that's yeah. kind of dangerous. That's Evidence. Pretty... Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, Blake, your experience of Who before this first season of New Who? Um, I think I saw it first when I was about 10 years old in uh, Mobile, Alabama. Really? On, Mobile? Uh, yeah, Mobile. Nice. On, uh, on PBS. I just want to do a little shout out. One of my favorite cons that occurs, it happens in Mobile, MobyCon, which I drug your husband to, Brian, two years yep. ago to, um, <laughs> which got, I'm looking forward to attending this year. I got the drunken is, phone calls. Yes, which will be, which I'll be attending very soon. I can't wait to see you guys in Moby. It's been way too long, two years. <laughs> so sorry for interrupting. I just had to do a little <laughs> shout out to my peeps at Moby. So but, uh, yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. I, I didn't a, get that Moby connection. It was, uh, yeah, yeah the, the local PBS channel ran, uh, it was Tom Baker, it was yeah. my first one. Um, definitely also caught a, a chunk of the, a good chunk of the run with, uh, with Unit and all that. Oh, yeah. The, the Brigadier. Uh, the Brigadier. Um, that's, that was, yeah, they had, they, 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 uh, had a bunch of, they had a, a good chunk of those, yeah. um. Uh, I think, yeah, most of what I saw was, was from the Tom Baker era. Well, I mean, it, make, it makes a lot of sense because the way uh, the BBCs would sell PBS episodes were in, in blocks. And the, bi the big blocks that they got were the Tom Bakers. And the second big block they usually got were the Peter Davisons. So you got a lot of the 70s, 80s, and every once in a while they'll pick up, they would pick up a few of the black and whites, a few of the Collins, and a few of the Sylvester's if you're lucky. Um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of people that you talk to, um, I would say definitely in our generations, um, and I would honestly say we're the, probably the last that originally saw Who on PBS. It's going to be, you know, like all the new kids, they all saw, they, or they're all seeing Who on like your BBC Americas, your sci-fi channel, because they showed it for a little while, um, and then your Netflix, your iTunes, your Amazon On Demands. So, I mean, it's really interesting that, you know, they won't have that, that connection to PBS like we did, which I think it's, which I think is a really interesting sociological thing. Um, but let's get into um, New Who. Um, and we're, we're going to talk about, we're talking season one here, because that's what you guys just watched. So, first off, what were your impressions of Eccleston as the Doctor? Uh, I have to say, I mean, because I had seen it before, so I mean, and I'm, you know, it's it's been on a while, and I've been hearing about it. Yeah. But I've, but I was like, I didn't want to just jump in. I was, so I was like, I need I was trying to find a way to start back at yeah at the first season, and uh, so I definitely was like, I had a lot of like, I, there was a lot of building. Yeah. Oh yeah. Of course. And it was just so, but I I liked like his original his first appearance. I you know the first episode. Rose. With bro, I mean, yeah, it, it's called Rose. Sorry, that right. that was the geek in me. You know, I I just, just about titles. The the, the yeah. initial yeah the the way they they you know he came across initially there I I liked that yeah because it's kind of like there's a lot of build up this and I mean even I mean even then there had been a lot of build up oh yeah so I mean I liked how it was handled I he was introduced I thought they introduced him well yeah I, I liked him what do you think I um. I think they ha and as we just talked about the yeah. build up. I think they handled it perfectly because how do you really introduce something that's been waiting to be introduced for that long? Yeah. You know what was it? A ten year hiatus? No. No. Well, well I, I was thinking there was a movie. Before, well, yeah. Oh, the, I, I, the, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of trying a. No, 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 no. no that, that, that's fine. Um, yeah. I mean, the TV movie, even though it was what it was, you know. It didn't catch on. It wasn't the fire right. that this would become. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, if, there, if you look at that hiatus, it was much shorter than when they ended McCoy. Um, but, I mean, there had been this huge, huge gap right. for so, who. And it, it, people have been waiting and waiting and waiting. Uh, yeah. So, my, 
there was a moment, and, and I think most people who watched the first episode probably reacted similarly, I hope. Um, you know, that they're running away from the plastic, you know, things, and, yeah. and they're doing the thing, and he's got his device, and yeah. he's like, everything, you know, everything would go to hell, basically, if I didn't have this. So, well, it was just like, yeah. so, yeah. so, I'm not the transmitter, and it'd be run. terrible, except that I have this. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's very, uh... it was just, there was a certain charm, a certain snarkiness almost that yeah. he has that he brought that back and yeah. really quick and he kept it simple and they would they didn't try for a big entrance they i think they kept it like no no we're just going to keep continuing doing the story we're just going to keep going you know we're not we're not going to look for a massive entrance and i liked that but every little thing that he did every little quirk i think really just added up to make him endeared to you early on yeah it's like early you're like the guy's all right okay I yeah, can, I mean, I, <laughs> I still remember watching Rose for the first time, um, and I was very excited because I mean, my fandom returned. I mean, yeah. I won't lie. I mean, I'm a huge Doctor Who fan, hence the reason why I do this. But I mean, I grew up with the Doctor. I mean, I watched every day. I'm one of those lucky few that don't remember my first Doctor. I don't remember my first episode because I've always watched it. And Eccleston was very, I mean, was very exciting to me. He had a lot of Baker in him. Um, going back to Classic Who, um, but I really enjoyed it. I mean, I, in, in a sense, it was a very, it was very much a Doctor Light episode because we didn't follow the Doctor's story in this. We followed Rose's story in this, right. which I thought was a great way, um, not only to introduce the new companion, but to introduce the new Doctor and in, introduce a new generation mm -hmm. and a new way of storytelling because we're not back in the 80s we're not back in the 90s you you have to tell the story in a way that will hook modern audiences not just the classic people but the new people as well well it's a, it's a simple technique um rose is the average yeah human it's okay i'm gonna say it. she's pants she's a pair of pants that anybody can put on it's mm. yeah. All right. i would put that pair of pants on <laughs> i opened the door to that one you but, did but she's she's very average. Yeah. She's a very average character. Um, and, and she, you know, she follows the doctor. So the, the, the general watcher can put themselves in her position and be like, I lead a fairly normal, boring life. Yeah. I it's, totally it's understand your, her perspective. Yeah. It, she, and, she's the everyman. And, and, and yeah, the so everyman narrator. what the, what yeah. they did in that first episode is they let the audience put themselves in the traveling companions shoes. Exactly. And I think that was important for them to draw everybody in. Because later on, I mean, the Doctor is just such a prominent, strong character, and Rose, you know, she's she is a little damselly at times. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> not always. At times, I said. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, th that's the thing with the female companion that th that they carried over from Classic Who. I mean, they could be strong, they could be their own character, but there is always that sense of the damsel in distress because well, the Doctor needs somebody to save. I mean, it's just. The way you tell a story. It's well, true. Yeah. It's also, what he does. <laughs> um, her age is important because she's just turning 20, essentially. Yeah. She's like 19, 20. And uh, she, so she's also coming of age and, you know, growing yeah. while yeah. traveling through time and space. Well, and I mean, she doesn't know what she wants to do with the rest of her life. Yeah. And this magic man with this magical box appears. Exactly. Yeah. And it's, it's very appealing, especially to, you know, the... 20 somethings, I oh, think, yeah. that are just like, yeah, because what I mean, am I doing? Yeah, you know, I mean, like, it, it's well, they didn't have to sell the show to the, the new Who fans, I mean, the old classic Who fans. No, they, they were just happy anyway. that they were going to have the Doctor Who back, whether they liked it or not, because there's tons of debate about you know how they like it. They do that with every Doctor, every season, every episode. I mean, I was just damn happy to have my stuff back, and I thought it was done well. Um, and, and I did enjoy that, that first episode, Rose. I'm not sure if Eccleston had sold me that he was the Doctor. But he was doing a really good job of it in that episode. Because uh, a lot of times the, the, the new Doctor doesn't always really sell me in that first episode. Um, it, it has happened twice. But um, Ackleson definitely grew on me fast. Um, and I think because, to me, he was like a modern take on Baker. But that's just the way I saw it. But he did have his own quirks and his own personality in definitely there. Definitely like a goofy sort of charm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so moving on from Rose, we go to, um, I can't remember every episode, uh, which is probably my least favorite, is The um, the End of the World. Oh, I liked that one. Oh, it's, it's not a bad episode. I mean, I, I did like some of the characters in it. I just, 
the reason why it's not one of my favorites, and I sort of think it's one of the weaker episodes in series one, and don't get me wrong, some of the, you know, some episodes, like in some TV shows, would love to have an episode as good as End of the World, as because it, it would be their best. Their, I mean, every episode's fairly strong. I don't know. I, I think the reason why it wasn't one of my favorites just because Cassandra, and, and I felt like they beat a dead horse um, coming into tenant season, but that that's jumping ahead there. But I mean, I can't just dis really disconnect there. But uh, why did you like the episode so much? Well, I mean, plain and simple fact, it reminded me of the restaurant at the end of the universe by Douglas Adams. Yeah. So I'm like, hey, it's a similar theme that I actually think is a is is kind of a cool theme. You know, the idea of watching the Earth burn yeah. from space just to, as as a show, not as like, a, oh my God, we have to save the Earth. But as a, it's it's a spectacle. Well, that's interesting you used to say that. I, I never made that connection, but I could definitely see that connection being there. And of course, I'm not sure if you knew this, uh, Adams wrote some of the oh, yeah. some of the best Baker episodes back yeah. in the day. Yeah. And oversaw the key to time season, um, which was one of the first uh, seasons of Who that had an overall story arc, which was, which was kind of cool for back then. But yeah, that, that's an interesting, that's a really interesting take on that episode. I, the other thing yeah. I liked about it was for people who were probably not so fresh on everything, because, yeah. um, I mean, I really don't remember Cassandra. I, I don't... That's that's the uh, the woman... No, the, no, 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 yeah, the yeah. skin face. No, I mean, yeah. from before. No, 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 you never would have... No, this was the first time she ever appeared. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was like, no, that, she's, like not said, I was like, she's not classic said beating here. She's not classic When you said beating a dead horse, I was yeah. like... Uh, no, but... What, there was just a lot of her in that episode. Yeah, there really yeah. was, but... Uh, I guess my thing was, is I uh, it, it was a great introduction of a list of important characters oh, yeah. that you're going to see, and it was an easy way to do it, and they kept it clear. Oh, yeah, that, that also has the face of Bo in it. Yes, yes, which has shown a couple times, yes. you know, and uh, there was, I feel like we've seen another, well, we saw the little metal creatures, but we knew that was Cassandra's business anyway, yeah. but, I don't know, I just thought it was, it was a fun episode, I liked, I like that she keeps referring to it as their first date, Yeah. and I'm like, okay, alright, yeah, I, the the romance between the doctor and and Rose I don't know I I don't know how I feel about it I, actually I do know how I feel about it but I will save let Blake say how he feels yeah, about it. what did you episode. think of, what did you think about the end of the world I didn't like Cassette I'll, I I will go yeah. with I, I'll agree with you. yeah I just didn't, she was just a little annoying to me but yeah I mean she's also that's what she was supposed to yeah. be oh yeah, yeah. Uh, totally and the, so they nailed that but it was just she was just annoying yeah but. Um, I mean, I... <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know what? what? I'm a girl. Yeah. I watch a lot more girly things, and that sort of, um, snobbish, um, self-centered and oh, vain yeah. archetype yeah. is very popular in a lot of things, I mean, like, girly things that I've been she, exposed she to is. over the years. So I guess maybe I'm desensitized to it. I'm not as annoying. I mean, she's annoying, because yeah. I know she's evil. <laughs> yeah. Um... Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, it's just, it just. I mean, if, when I look at the season, because I'm, I'm I'm cheating here, looking at looking at the episodes on the uh, on the back here. Uh, yeah, I just it just with what with what we get later on, it just like I said, it's just. Not, I mean, who at its worst is most shows at their best, um, and there are definitely some episodes I like least than in the world, but I think out of this season, it's, it's one of my least favorites. Um, then we get to the um, you, uh, Unquiet Dead, which um, creep. Oh that, no, that was the one with the ghost with the blue. Yes, the, the blue lights. Oh, yeah. The Victoria Charles, Charles Dickens. One, Charles Dickens. Um, that was a good one. I think the dog has something were... to say about it. Yes, <laughs> I I like that because it actually ties into um, Torchwood. Right. But yeah, I mean you haven't seen that yet. But um, the girl that. That is the one that sacrifices herself. I forget what her name was in The Unquiet Dead. Ends up playing Gwen in Torchwood, and they actually do make a connection between the two um, was in Torchwood. In that episode. Yeah, was it Gwen? I, I, think, I think so. so. It's possible. I really, really can't I'm remember. Sure they, they referred to her as Gwen, Gwyneth. Yeah, it, it's a possibility. Uh, I, I enjoyed it, um, and I really like the guy that they, they, they got to play Charles Dickens. Yeah, oh, yeah. he was good. He was, he was definitely good. Okay. I feel like they they were definitely kind of hitting the stride at that point because that was the I guess that's going back to to 
the end of the world. They were also, it did also still kind of feel like they were getting things, you know, like every show has its first few episodes where there's kind of that settling in. Yeah. I, I think that also might have been part of the, part of what kept that one from being better than it was. Yeah. And, and Unquiet Dead definitely, they definitely seemed to have really hit, they, they, they were, they were on the stride there. Yeah. Yeah. They also, they, and they, they also hit the stride with the, it's a serious topic, with, but they also did keep their, their humor oh, yeah. level. Oh, the, oh, not another one. You know, that, <laughs> that kind of moment, the, yeah, that, great, another that, dead that, guy walking around. <laughs> that moment at the beginning there where, yeah. you know, she gets up and she attacks the guy and you're, ex you know, there's the sort of expected, oh God, the dead <laughs> are walking. And in, instead it's, oh, not another one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it was. Uh, I thought that was good, was, and um, that was when they first started uh, mentioning the bad wolf. Yes. Yes, which would become very, very important. That was actually something I thought about: is the fact that watching it, like, because we just we sat down. And yeah, we, we powered through, through one, one day. day. One yeah. Watched them all. You know, over watching them like over a season, those would have been a lot more time to just be like, "What is that?" Ah, yeah. <laughs> I, it's something that's come up in, when I've watched other shows. That it's like when you when you watch a show, you know, back to back like that, you you get, you lose that week between episodes of what does that mean? It's yeah. true. Well, that's all. I, that's all I had of Lost, which made Lost viewing so much better for me because I was able to power through it all. Yeah. So I didn't have like that like th you know year wait sometimes between episodes. I'm I'm cheating here. I have to pull up the episodes. I can't remember them all. <laughs> um, so our next one um, is the Aliens of London and World War Three, which introduces introduces us to the Slovene, the Slovene and yeah. the uh, head of uh, British education. Um, so what did you think of those that that two parter? That was our first two parter that yeah. we had. Um, not bad. Um, not, not one of my favorite two-parters, um, just personally. Um, it was just, I think their first attempt to do that multi-episode sort of story. Um, I, I, I'm not gonna lie, I got the, uh, the fart noises got a little old. <laughs> yes, yes it did. It got old. It's it like, did. I get it, okay, the first four times was fine, and, you know. They could have done it a lot less. And I think that was a little distracting for me. Yeah. Just because I'm like, oh, it's that gross noise. That, <laughs> it's not even like a like a funny fart noise. It was just that weird gurgle noise. Yeah. It's like, oh, God. Well, because it was... Yeah. Because of what it was. Yeah, yeah. But, um... It was... See, I was actually really surprised we didn't get Union in those episodes. They mentioned them, but they, they, yeah. mentioned, but they mentioned them. He, yeah, he goes onto the website. Yeah, but, I was just expecting. We don't see them. Yeah. yeah, I was expecting more unit with that. I mean, especially when the name came up, I was, yeah. I, I was like, oh, so we get to see where they are now, and yeah. then that didn't come to. Also, I, I found the the, uh, well, one thing obviously much more budget this yeah. time around. Oh yeah, and, yeah, and much they more budget. I'm so you know a lot of use yeah. there, but I, I found this, the fact that the Savine. I mean, they had, like, the claws, but they had those baby faces. That was yeah, kind of weird. Yeah, it was kind of yeah. creepy. The big, like, the big eyes yeah. and the chubby cheeks. Yeah, they, they would come around in the, the Sarah Jane uh, episodes quite a bit, because they were definitely, I think, Davies' attempt, because Davies did um, write those two, that two-parter. I think that was his attempt to create a kid-friendly monster that wasn't okay. so scary, that was like, ooh, look, the monster farts, you know? Yeah. I was thinking, that. yeah, I was thinking that during it that I was like, okay, well, this is a bit more, you know, yeah, it's they, they a slightly more youthful humor, and, and yeah, and they do have the the baby face, yeah, exactly. Now we get to one of my absolute favorite episodes in in this uh, first season, Dialect. I I would say I think that may be my favorite be out of the first yeah season. because it it ties in classic Who for the first time. Mm -hmm. Um, it brings back the dialect, which, and of course, I'm, I'm totally pronouncing it wrong. He'd yell at me later. I just, the way I pronounce it, um, which I never realized uh, the, the dialects, I mean, are almost as ho old as who themselves. They appeared in the second story of Doctor Who. Right. So, I mean, it was great to see that. And also, in that episode, we get to see 
a classic Cyberman head, because mm-hmm. uh, I love the museum. And a lot of people speculate that on one of the other monsters in one of those on display takes a prominent role later on in the series, which I'm not going to spoil where it reappears, but a lot of people, and actually looking back at it, matches up really well. So I think that's credit to um, the people that will come later, that, you know, they're, they're, they're still tying everything together with both New Who and Classic Who. But, I mean, really, I think this was one of my absolute favorite episodes all the way around. One of the things with the uh, with Daleks and... Um... I might be stepping out of bounds. As, no, no, there's, there's no but, out of bounds. Okay. From my understanding, when they first created the Daleks, I mean, really, you're trying to make this trash can with a... Pl- with, with a Pepper Pop, actually. Oh. Well, I'm it, just saying... You look, I, was, I was... Yeah. The well, little knobs and everything. Right. Okay, See, so... Pepper Pop. A Pepper Pop with, <laughs> you know, That's a really plunger good. sticking yeah. out of it. Scary. How do you do that? And it's... It they did. They yeah. always were able to do it for some reason, and it was, uh, I mean, like I said, when I first saw them, I'm like, oh, they're so cute. They're little robots, but um, well, this episode, they part really... Part of the voice, I think. Oh, yeah, just, the just voice to is... say, the voice is just... The... That's yeah. part of it, yeah. and it just, it's the, well, the they were well written. Very well written, but my favorite part was at that, that end, when the, when the casing opens, yeah. and you see the little, yeah. the little blob, yeah. and it's so... There's more like a feeling of despair and just, it's, it's, it's sad. Trapped. It's trapped. Yeah. It's ro- it almost looks like it's rotting. Like it's just like a melted piece of flesh. Yeah. And it's that horrible, like sad, pit, like, empty pit feeling that you get. Like, oh God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I, I, it, like I said, this is one of my favorite episodes on so many different levels. Um, and it has... The rage episode. I mean, this this episode where I think really allowed he, Eccleston to stretch had some as an actor. Beautiful lines yeah. delivered. Just I mean, in his speeches and he his, goes from one extreme to the next yeah. on a drop of a, of a hat. It, it was I loved it. I mean, it but, was just. But it also it made sense for him too. Oh, was, totally, was, yeah. You know. And then we get to the. Um, oh my God! I'm blanking on his name. And I love him to death as an Simon actor. Peg? The Simon Pegg episode. Yes. Oh, he was great. <laughs> I loved it. He was Pegg great. was great. <laughs> he did that so well. I think yeah. they wasted him. I agree. They could have had him. I would have loved to see him as the master. I would have loved to see him in any other role. I think they totally he was, he was really wasted. Fun, though, oh, don't get me wrong. He, he was the best part about that episode. Oh, yeah. As he's, a point, he's what yeah. carried that episode. Unfortunately, yeah. Simon Pegg is often wasted. Oh, yeah. Often, like they, he's such a versatile actor, and so it's kind of hard to use him sometimes. I think because you want to use him, but I mean, when he's playing like a second or third string character, how much? On the other you know, hand, I gotta say, if you'd had, if they'd had someone that could not bring bring it to the table like he did, yeah. I don't think that episode would have worked. Oh no, I, I agree. If I mean, you needed someone like he's that. He's the only reason why this isn't my least favorite episode of the season. And I, I think that might have been part of it. I and think I also, they recognized they need someone who could who could carry a lot of the rest of that episode. Yeah. The, uh, the woman, though, that played the news reporter, she was really I good. I loved her. I really liked her. Yeah. I would have loved to see her come back. Yeah, I actually was kind of... Uh, well, later on in yeah. future episodes, when, yeah. they, when they go back to the yeah. satellite, I was kind of hoping it was actually going to be her hooked up to the, fit, to the computer and yeah. not... Because yeah. that would have been a cool twist, yeah. but, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, no. And then we get, actually, I did not realize this, we get to a Paul Cornell episode of Doctor Who, um, the uh, Father's Day, which we meet Rose's father for the mm-hmm. first time, and Rose realizes there are consequences for interfering with time. Yeah, that was, that was a good one. And I mean... Yeah. It was a good, solid, single episode. Yes. Um, and it was definitely, I, I hate to say, it was much better than the previous. And it's also building us to something quite spectacular in the next episode. It was a good one-off episode. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't show, I wouldn't use this episode to introduce somebody to who with. No. But it's a good, solid, of course, Paul Quinnell episode. And it seems a. Uh, you have lots. You you agree with me on this? I mean, I, I think Rose's father 
Yeah. You can probably open. She'll probably go sit on the couch. And oh, that's fine. But, uh, she won't make as much noise. Oh, uh, I'll I'll open her. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. <laughs> oh, trust me, my my cats have interfered in tons and tons of episodes. So so you Pepper gets her. <laughs> oh, Pepper. Okay. All right. There so go. okay, we continue. Okay, Father's Day. So, what do you guys feel about Father's Day besides me just babbling, babbling on about Paul Cornell being wonderful? I thought it was touching. Yes. I I really liked the amount of development that Rose's father got. I mean, it was just one episode, yeah. but I mean, he was he was a well. You had the whole point where at the beginning you get like the you know from yeah. the reading tour, and he's obviously been built up. You know, yeah. from that, and then, you know, we get the fact that no, he's he's not that guy. He's a real person, because yeah, you know, I kind of like that whole because it's kind of because we do that. Yeah, we we you know, you know, we turn people, we make people better than they were. Yes, when we remember them, but then he does. You know, they're at the end. Yeah, like, you know, he he, he gets a chance to play the hero. And he does. Yes, he. I mean, he saves everybody. He, it's more importantly, he he does it for he, you know. He's like he, he's a he's he pulls he pulls the I'm gonna be a good father card. Yes, he does, and that was really really wonderful. And um, as another point, uh, he they show that he was kind of hapless, always quick fix money schemes. You oh, know, yeah. like I'm gonna sell this, and, and so it's like you know normally in in literature and, and film and whatnot. Characters like that are meant to be portrayed as, you know, yeah. a little bumbly, and they never get anything right. Uh, and for that, he finally was able to get something right. He's like, no, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do something right, not just for me and for, you know, the world, but for my family. Yeah. You know? So I think I really like that, that it kind of gave that sort of um, cl uh, closure for him. And then we get to the first sort of Stephen Moffat episode um, of New Who. Though some people would, would say that um, his Children in Need special, which helped sort of bring about showing the BBC that New Who was, you know, who was possible again. But we, we get what some people say, probably two, the scariest story out of, class, uh, of this New Who, The Empty to Child and The Doctor Dances, um, which also is very important because we're introduced to Captain Jack Hartness. Indeed. Um, I love Jack, Jack, by the way. <laughs> He's funny. What did you guys think about the mummy? Oh, that, that's creepy. creepy. So creepy. So you, you really found that creepy. I, I'm like the only person that did not find that creepy. That kid was creepy. That Come kid's on. creepy. I, all right. All right the, kids are creepy. The mob of people was just a mob of, yeah, of zombie robot. I mean, that, okay. Yeah. But the kid was creepy. Like, yeah. especially, like, early on when you didn't really know what was going that on. quiet, little sad voice. I mean, he was creepy. Yeah. Come on. You know? He was going after the other kids. I mean, but in general, I always found ki toddler kids, uh, like, five-year-olds are creepy, man. Unnatural children are generally creepy. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. just saying. I mean, you got The Shining, Freddy Krueger movies. I'm just saying I was raised to believe that kids that speak in a, high, a slightly higher-toned voice, you know, and, and just... Maybe a little repetitive, you know. So, what do you guys think of Captain Jack Harkness and his first appearance? I liked him. I he was smarmy. I liked him. <laughs> he he was smarmy, but he was smarmy in that way that you. But he was smarmy in a in an enjoyable way. Well, I mean, yeah, honest, fun. honestly, I would love to see a scene of J Jack Harkness, uh, Captain Mel, and and Han Solo. <laughs> together, because I mean, they could I, go drinking together. Yes, they would be a good drinking buddy. Yes, that that would I mean, work. somebody would, would get killed, but they could. <laughs> <drink. Yeah. laughs> I mean, nobody I just, else in the bar would, might would, would survive, but they could definitely because go I just, together. Because I feel that Harkness was was that lovable scoundrel. He was. Yeah, that they, yeah. That they brought so. into it. He's our scoundrel. I liked yeah. him, and uh, when they kind of get and, more into his candor, character, we see yeah. how scoundrelly he is. Yes. but he. Yes, is. Was it his uh, first century sensibilities? Yes. <laughs> yes. I love that. <laughs> I, I, I enjoyed that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> then we get to yet another single episode, which, you know, sort of a take it or leave it for me, Boomtown, which brought us to Slovene again, which I thought they were, it was, she was used much better in this episode. Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, 
than what we had seen in the two-parter. Um, the, the dinner scene was just The dinner scene was awesome. hilarious. Yeah. I loved it. <laughs> I'd actually Lit. seen that dinner scene before. I don't know. I was I guess I was surfing channels and yeah. came across that particular scene. Mm -hmm. So I had actually seen that before, but I got to enjoy it more because I saw it you know, in context. In context, yeah. So it was... Um, yeah, I very much enjoyed the uh, the dinner scene. The, but I also really liked oh. the ending because it was... Uh, I mean, the concept of return to innocence, yes. second chances, and whatnot. And, and Because she really did deserve to get yeah. executed. She absolutely deserved it. But that's the thing with Ackleson's doctor. He is willing to give second chances as long as you're willing to show that you're worthy and willing to take that second chance. Well, I don't know. He wasn't really willing to give her a second chance. She got it more by chance when the TARDIS door opened and... She looked. That was really. I think the TARDIS gave her a second chance. I don't think it was the Doctor, because he I was going to take her to her execution. Yeah. Well, I mean, he also just came from the Time War. I don't know. I like to think that you know, there's a little bit of him wanting to give give her the second chance, mm -hmm. or that maybe the TARDIS showing him that people are worthy of a second well, chance. I think the key is that he he wanted to, but he couldn't. Yeah. And then when she got put back, he that was like that was the solution that he couldn't that he couldn't have done and but he was definitely all over it when it happened. Yeah. It was that was obviously the result he wanted was a way to give her a second chance. Yeah. yeah. And he it's just didn't the, have one yeah, until time, that happened yeah. cuz And he yeah, cuz he was like, "All right, yeah, we're going to bring her back to the home planet, give her a second chance, everything will be good." Cuz he he definitely recognized that she didn't she didn't choose Entirely to be who she was. Yeah. And uh, on a side note on yes. that episode, I particularly like that episode because it really addresses the issue that Rose is actually really not that good of a person or friend to her people back home. Because you know what? <laughs> she picked up and left, and and her mom is always like, where are you? Yeah. You know, and, and you and got Mickey. people... And poor, poor Mickey. Mickey. Yes. I mean, he waited a year for her. Yeah. You know? A year and a half at that point, yeah, I think yeah. it was, you know, and it was, and, and he's just like, what, do you think that just because you're going to call, I'm going to come running around, and, yeah. and, and this and that, and... Oh, yeah, Rose, Rose was a, kind of a was, yeah, yeah, kind of she's not, bits, yeah, she's not, not a very nice person. No, she's yeah. really out for herself. But for I'll say this, you know, she was, they wrote her like a real person. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, but I, it's also important to point out that side of the character. Yeah, okay. that there's two sides to every coin. Yeah, because yeah, as much as we enjoy Rose, because she's cute and yeah. cheery and adventurous, a and pop singer. She, you know, she actually that the actress is a pop singer. I believe that. Yeah. I I didn't know that, but now yeah. I do. Uh, but the she, she definitely but, does not treat Mickey well. No, no, no she doesn't. She really does. I not. always felt bad for Mickey. Okay, I'm glad we're not the only ones. No, like, no, no. It's like, bad for you. Everybody sort of felt bad with the way Rose treated Mickey. Okay, and but so yeah, I think it's important to show that your your main characters are not all saints. Exactly. You know, in fact, um they they often challenge the doctor in similar ways, you know. Oh yeah. You know. Oh. And then we get to the, the the final sort of arc of not only the first season, but of the Ninth Doctor, of Eccleson. Um, and we we find out about that wolf and everything. It, it, like, it all comes together. Um, and, of course, a lot of us didn't expect that wolf to be so important. Um, but it turned out to be very important, which then made us always, you know, from here on out, now, look now to you see. Look for that. Yes. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about Bad Wolf first, the first part. Um, How did you feel about uh, the first half of that story? I, you know, when they when they go back to the to the station, and it's like. Oh yeah, about about a hundred years ago when everything fell apart. Yeah, it's like it's like you were oh. supposed to pick up and put things back together. No, we didn't. We just fell apart. Yes. Nobody fixed anything. Yeah. And and, but we find out why too. It's true. Well, but yeah. at the same time, it's I don't know. There's kind of is part. There's kind of the reoccurring theme of the Doctor does come in, do stuff, and then 
He's got, he, he doesn't stick around to help rebuild anything. Well, I mean, it also shows, which was a concept in, in Classic Who quite a bit, time can be rewritten. Yeah. Yes. And he is notoriously bad for rewriting time, you know, on the willy-nilly, but he couldn't do it for, like, Rose's father. Because yeah. this was, was where they sort of introduced the, the, the concept of fixed points that can't be changed versus those that can be. Um, because, I mean, there's still the, uh, which I'll bring up because I tend to bring this up a lot, the fact that he wrote, rewrote his own granddaughter out of existence where when she, at the end of The Invasion of the Dialects, where he left her off in um, futuristic London after the Dialect, inva yeah, the Dialect Invasion, um, later on, he actually ends up rewriting all that. So we still don't know what happened for Susan. Um, but this is the last, also the last time a story after we see Captain Jack. Yep. Um, but then we get to the, the the next part, where the, you know, band of resistance, all that other jazz, fighting against the dialects, but, and, you know, them realizing... Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, you know he's he's, he's got the solution, but yeah. it will kill everything. Yes, and he's and he's he's it's gonna do it. He's dangerous like, choice. Oh, yeah, there there are humans elsewhere. We don't need these humans. <laughs> this isn't all the humans, but it's all the dogs. That was such a great so kill moment, though the back and forth. Yeah, you know, just Eggleston's reactions, his portrayal of his emotions. I mean, I was really sold on the whole thing. I was like, oh yeah, yeah, it's um, gonna really do it. You know. And then we get Rose to come in, sort of save the day, mm -hmm. with, with the help nice of the TARDIS. <laughs> yes, um, with the Deus Ex Machine, which is notoriously bad with, with Davies and the TARDIS. He likes making a Deus Ex Machine. Well, it is, uh, but it it does have consequences. Yep. With what she did, um, and two of the biggest consequences are one, making Captain Jack immortal, and two, causing the demise of the Doctor. Yeah. Um, how'd you guys feel about the, the regeneration? You know, what led up to it? I mean, the sacrifices that were made. Um, how, how did you feel about all that? I mean, of course, you, when we all watched this uh, originally, I mean, we sort of knew that there was going to be a new Doctor already, which kind of baffled us. But you guys already knew because, I mean, there, there was yeah. no surprise because, I mean, we're up to our, our seventh season coming yeah. up. I kind of guessed when the title was Parting of Ways. Yeah. I was like, oh, um, one of them's going to not be around. <laughs> how, how do you think it was handled? Uh, do you think it was a, a, a good, do you think they handled it well, handled it poorly? He, he did. He did. It was a good death. I think it was a, it was a fair, it was a very uh, King Solomon solution. Yeah. Sort of, you know, like, well, it's, you know, it's. We could split the baby in half, or maybe something awesome will happen. Yes. <laughs> you know, like, and and yeah. So one was sacrificed for the many, uh, which was sad, but not as bad as sacrificing everybody. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, but I mean, really, was the doctor's sacrifice really a sacrifice? Well, I mean, because he knew he was going to regenerate. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I think there was. It, it falls kind of into that. I can do this. Yeah. I you know, it's gonna it's gonna kill this me, but I'll regenerate. If it kills you, you're just dead. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, so. I, I, I mean, it was it was definitely a case of I mean, you, I and you know that was that was part of it because because he thinks things through. As a point too, his general reaction to the Daleks and and this was actually pointed out very well in that in that first episode where they showed us the Daleks for the yeah. first time. Was, yes, uh, he yeah. was like, no, you are not allowed to exist. Screw you guys. I'm blowing this thing up. And you never really... Um, nobody really gets a chance to be like, well, well, wait a minute. Let's it's talk to the... time you see him like that. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, but who... He's so, and you can't blame him. Who, no. <laughs> who is really there to stand up against the Doctor? Rose did. Yeah, he in said that her, Dalek episode. Yes, but I mean, and that of course, case, he, he also sends her away. Yeah. Before this. It's true. Yeah, with the TARDIS. It's very true. Um, so what did you guys think about just what you saw of Tenet? The, the whole, I guess, 15, 20 seconds of Tenet. I thought it was a pretty good, I mean, the fact that it's like, so where was I? Oh yeah, Barcelona. Just like. Yeah, yeah good follow-up. The... Like, let's the not... That, that whole... 
Still the doctor. Or the, still the doctor, not quite the doctor, but I mean, I thought it worked well. It was a Let's not skip a beat. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I remember watching that, and I was just like, interesting choice um, for the next doctor. But of course, within 15 seconds, you really don't get a feel for who that doctor's going to be. Um, which has always been the case with every regeneration. Like, in, the, in that episode, like, you get, like, 15 seconds of the new Doctor. You know, you basically just get to see a face, and then you have to wait. And, of course, for us, we had to wait to Christmas to get anything of Tenet. But we're not going to talk about Tenet this time. Um, but what do you guys think overall of Eccleston as the Doctor? I liked him. I, I really did, like did. He brought a nice energy that I thought... Um, I saw his energy generally just it was a little, it was a little goofy, but yeah. but that fits. Yeah. What's it, what what I've always said was they needed they needed Eccleson a name to relaunch the show. Right. But they needed somebody like David Tennant to carry the torch. Um because originally Eccleson was signed for like four seasons. And he really didn't say a lot about why he had left until after that initial contract was over. He waited until that until that until that time period was over. He just really did not like the working environment. You know, he was up until then he was used to movies or miniseries. He just was not up for the grueling schedule and the poor conditions of doing a weekly TV show. Because really, the turnaround time on, on the Doctor Who episodes is one week, and they uh, even though they start filming now. I mean, by the time we're getting those last episodes, I mean, we're sort of sort of caught up in a way with their filming schedule. Um, but, yeah, I mean, he, he, I mean, he really did not like it. Cause, and sadly, he has said he would never return to the role. So that means with the 50th coming up, we're not going to get Eccleston. Kind of like Baker when they did The Five Doctors. Let's go. Up out of 